Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos in business process automation. Today I want to talk about the question, how are workflow cases started in practice? If you have been working with a workflow management system for some time, you may have seen that you have to first upload a specification to the workflow engine and then you can start cases for the specification. And while you are working with the system and you are developing, the cases are usually started by some kind of administrator who has the right to start them. But in a practical setting, there is no person sitting somewhere in a dark room and just waiting for starting cases. And so it's not working like that. And how is it working in practice? Well, the answer is this. Um, if we have a workflow management system, this usually doesn't sit really on top of the ladder. It's something that is more in the middle tier. So we usually have on top of the workflow management system, we have some kind of application that is invoking the workflow management system. And then the workflow management system itself sits on some kind of persistence layer. And so in practice, this means that the workflow management system is integrated in some application and just invoked by this application. And so to some respect, it's hidden from the direct access of the user. Um, we have been doing some projects, for example, with YAWL, where we have integrated YAWL into a LifeRay portal. And I'll put some links to videos on this topic in the description below. But you can think of any other workflow management system. And so in general, we are somewhere inside some application. And then it is somehow the application that starts the workflow cases. Let's take the example of a personal management system. So in a personal management system, you have persons and the persons are um, somewhere existing also outside of the workflow management system. Typically, they're in some kind of relational database, for example. And then you have the application somewhere and the application can access these persons and the application gives you access to the database where the persons are stored. So let's take um, the example of a person in a personal management system and let's think about three statuses that the person may have. So it may have the status new, it may have the status onboarded or offboarded. And if, for example, we choose one particular person in the status new, we are then able in the application to click on some button or whatever user interface element we have there. And then the application will start a new case, for example, for the onboarding workflow. And the application will pass some kind of input parameters to the workflow management system. For example, the personal number of the person um, who is to be onboarded, for example. And the user who is in the application is logged on and the user may also play a certain role. So the user may also be a parameter that is input into the case. And so the start of the workflow is typically from the application to the workflow management system. And once the workflow case is started, then we have the different tasks and then we have work items produced two different roles and these work items may be distributed to the same user who is sitting in front of the system already or to some other user depending on the roles that this user who has started the onboarding process had. And so this is how workflow cases are started in general. I hope this was useful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. See you soon.